I think this is on. Okay. Whoa. All right. We're not doing the lav mic today. I'm taking a risk. Decided I'm going to try the little handheld. So, okay. You right there? What's your name? Jake. Jake? Jacob. Jacob. Okay. Jacob. You're like lasered in on me right now. So, if at any point I start like getting way too quiet or like way too loud, I'm looking at you. You need to like wave and be like, bro. Blah, blah. Okay, Jacob, you're my guy. Uh, this is what was on the agenda. The quest for CNCF ecosystem security. Did anybody come in here because you saw quest and you thought that sounded really cool? You're like, I want to know about the quest. Okay, good. I'm not going to disappoint you guys. CNCF ecosystem security. Was that interesting to anybody? Is that why you guys came in here? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. You guys may not leave disappointed, hopefully. Uh, during the course of this, we are going to give out some awards to projects that have participated over the last month in improving their ecosystem security. Well, their project security, thereby increasing the security of the entire CNCF ecosystem. So we are extremely excited about that. That's where I need you to help me out because my, my volume levels may increase the more excited I get. Um, we're going to do a couple things. I'm going to introduce a couple people that are going to help me talk about the security slam and the different uh, security efforts that we've been doing within CNCF. Uh, Marina is going to come up for that number two right there. I'm going to come back up, talk for a little while for number three. Mike's going to come up and share a little bit from Argo. And then we're going to go through the wild mess of presenting awards to the most significant increases in security hygiene that we've seen over the last month. So let's do number one. I'm Eddie Knight. I work for Sonatype. Uh, so software supply chain security is our whole thing. That's what we care a lot, a lot, a lot about. Uh, we don't only ship some of the uh, most established software on that topic, but we are very, very active in different so open source ecosystems, just trying to work with projects and see the supply chain security get improved at the source. That's something we really, really, really heavily believe in. Marina and Michael don't have the microphone, so they don't get to give as uh, in-depth of introductions for themselves, but Marina is a tag security chair Right? Oh, big, 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 big. Okay. No, actually applaud for that because it's kind of a huge role in the ecosystem. And Michael has forever had a huge role as a maintainer of Argo CD. So don't clap for him. Uh-oh. They don't listen to me, Mike. But uh, they're going to come up here in just a second uh, to share a little bit about that. Um, the vision for the security slam is also the vision for ecosystem security. It's something that we all know is important on an intellectual level, uh, but we're constantly trying to find better ways to pursue and achieve this ecosystem security. Uh, I was stoked. Uh, Ryan Patrick, Major Ryan Patrick, gave us a quote just for this. <laughs> he wrote this down just for us to put it on this specific slide uh, because the U.S. Space Force is one of the... Uh, larger, more prominently known consumers of CNCF uh, projects. And so we were able to take some feedback from the U.S. Space Force and so several other different organizations and pass that feedback on to different projects to help folks know these are things that are important to the end users. And this is why your security hygiene improvements are actually making a significant change in the world. Uh, this is just a little peek at the end user uh, feedback perspective that we know, and I'm going to come back and talk about this a little bit more in just a second. Marina is going to share about how Tag Security is doing this throughout the year, not just in the one month that we're focusing on with this security slam. Thanks, Marina. Yeah, thank you. So Tag Security is one of the technical advisory groups within the CNCF, and we have members from across the CNCF that come together to talk about security-related um, issues within um, this ecosystem. So the vision of, of TAG Security is to provide protection of cloud-native systems while providing needed access, to provide common understanding and common tooling to help developers meet security requirements, and finally, to create some common tooling for audit and reasoning about system properties. 
So in practice, what this means is that we have a lot of different initiatives that um, people from the community come together on to help improve the security of, of all of us. And so the, the, some of these efforts focus on awareness, things like our white papers, where we take look at good ideas in security that have been created um, by other people in the community, and we kind of highlight those and share them with the broader community to help, um, help everybody improve their security. Um, we have a catalog of um, supply chain compromises for folks interested in you know, what threats are out there, as well as some other um, awareness for new projects and other, other areas. We also have some awareness through efforts where we really collaborate with CNCF projects um, to help them improve their security. There's a Security Palace project right now that's ongoing where we're getting a big group of volunteers to help projects do self-assessments. So this is a process where CNCF projects um, go through and evaluate for themselves um, their security posture, which then leads into the joint assessment process where members of TAG Security actually help projects improve their security. And there'll be a whole talk just about this um, process later today, and I'll have info about that on the next slide. And finally, we build our community. Um, the only way to make cloud native secure is to do it together. And so we collaborate with other tags um, within, the, uh, within the CNCF, as well as with um, groups outside of the CNCF, things like the OpenSSF that focus on uh, open source security more generally. Um, we have um, initiatives like the um, Cloud Native Security CTF, which is going to be happening next door um, tomorrow with some intros today, which I definitely encourage you all to check out if you're interested in getting some hands-on learning about, about security. As well as um, security conferences and villages like where we're all today, where we can talk about security and how we can make it all better together. This is the information about that talk later today. Um, we can learn more about the TAG security assessment process um, from some other um, members of the TAG. And, I will, and yeah, and if you're interested in getting involved, please get involved. This is, um, you know, this is how we can improve the security ecosystem. We have our publications, those include all those white papers I mentioned, a mailing list, which is somewhat active, where we talk about some stuff in security, and a very much more active Slack channel, as well as weekly meetings um, in a couple of different time zones to hopefully um, get some broader participation. So thank you, and I'll hand it back to Eddie to talk some more about the Security Slam initiative. Thank you. That was awesome. All right, uh, switching back. Take a picture of this. This is actually really, really important. Uh, if you want to know more and get more involved with the TAG security, uh, stay up to date with the things that are coming out of TAG security, these are resources that you should be taking advantage of. All right. Thanks again, Marina. We're at the point in my presentation where I don't remember what slides come after this. So uh, those of you who know me should be clenching your butt cheeks. Security Slam! That's what we're here to talk about. Looks like the ghost stole the colors from all of the different uh, logos there. Not cool, ghosty. Ghost is the Google open source security team. So technically, we have the Google logo on here twice. But they are the sponsors who provided the funding for prizes and swags. That way, we can make this event possible. Last year and this year, they sponsored it. Uh, and so the, uh, the open source security team has just been a huge, huge, huge boon on the entire ecosystem, not just the CNCF ecosystem, but the open source ecosystem. So I can't shout out to them enough. And just huge thanks for, uh, for their ability to, to step up and provide this. Is anybody from Google in the room? Is Anne here? No? OK. So no waving from Google today. But uh, it's, it's been really, really awesome to have the Ghost team involved in Slack, uh, supporting the different projects in increasing their security. So that's just been really, really, really fun. Also, Tin and myself spent a lot of time from uh, January until, uh, so this is the schedule. From February we started, uh, and we started working through things, and Tin was actually on board all the way through September. Uh, so Tin, can you wave somewhere? You were in the room 10 seconds ago. She knew I was gonna call her out. That's what happened. All right, well, huge thanks to Tin. And Katie, uh, I didn't make your picture on a slide, but Katie picked up after Tin here in October and November to help make things happen. 
Uh, and so the different swag that we have and things like that are possible because Katie was actually doing the heavy lifting of uh, organizing and, and dealing with vendors and things like that. So huge thanks uh, to Katie and Tin for, for bringing us this far. But I put this slide up here to tell a story. The security hygiene improvements that we've done have been to, uh, to try to organize things to where we have a special month that's just focused on this, to where we start getting a lot of people having the same conversations at the same time so that different projects in the ecosystem can learn from each other and do things alongside each other. We saw a huge success from this last year and it was repeated again this year. Um, the theory was that it would be repeated again, so that's why we started all the way back in, in February, trying to figure out the, the goals and the concepts, what do we want to be doing with the next security slam? Because every single year, it's a fresh slate, completely clean slate, no solid commitments, no contracts that we're gonna do it again the next year, but kind of a vibe that you know we probably should do this again. And so we started in February uh, and we did some announcements at KubeCon Europe and we thought that was enough. We thought, hey, we did some social posts, we did some videos at KubeCon Europe uh, in Amsterdam this year. Uh, spoiler alert, that wasn't enough early messaging to let projects know. So I didn't make a whole like lessons learned slide explicitly, but right there during that announcement phase, that is something that we've learned that we need to do better next year, is that just doing that initial announcement to tell projects that it's coming, it was not sufficient this year. Um, so we're gonna need to improve that and keep that pink line just going <laughs> all the way through to make sure that projects know that this is coming um, and avoid the projects saying, hey, this seems really cool, but, but we're just now hearing about it. That, that, that was just an absolute tragedy and devastation on my soul uh, when we heard that. So, so we're gonna need to avoid that next year when we plan this again. The next thing that we did was uh, setting the event metrics. And so we had several different people from the community that uh, said, please don't name me, but I'm gonna name you anyway, um, who helped us set the event metrics and uh, set up some goals uh, for the next year. And the way, what we decided, what we talked about, was that there are several different things that projects could be doing to go beyond the standard that we set last year. And so we decided, hey, we'll give people the same prize we gave last year if they do the same thing they did last year, but let's give them four more options. And so, the, so we spent a couple months working through what those options should be and how we should incentivize and pursue those things as a community across multiple projects. Uh, part of that was that we needed to give people the option to read more about these things that we are saying they should be doing. And so we worked with the Linux Foundation Training and Certification Program to create uh, three different express learning courses. There's a fourth that got paused and it'll probably be released uh, sometime next year. But we created multiple different LF express learning courses that take an hour to walk through some of the core concepts such as OpenSSF scorecard, what does it mean to make a, or what, what does it mean to make a self-assessment and the quickest way to do that. And Colin, what was the third one? Automating SVOMs and Providence was the third one that we did. And then we jumped into uh, launch and execution. But uh, before we did that, uh, we went back and solicited end user interest. We said, hey, uh, to a few people in the, in the community, in the end user community, we said, hey, could you tell us what projects you're using in your uh, ecosystem if we promise not to tell people, you know, you can tell us whether or not we can share your name and your details and things like that. And several different people said, yeah, you can, you can share my name. You can tell these projects that I'm using those. And, and that was hugely, hugely, hugely valuable to the projects, actually more than we expected. Uh, so another lesson learned was that projects loved hearing about what their end users were doing and what their end users wanted to see. It was a huge resounding success and I had multiple people DMing me saying, can I talk to the US Space Force? I'm like, no, I'll try next year. We did not arrange that as part of our agreement. Uh, but this was hugely successful where we, we took the, the input from all these different end users, brought it in through a survey and consolidated it into feedback. Uh, I actually wrote a set of scripts to, to like auto generate a message that I then shared out onto a bunch of different projects. I think I dropped four on Argo because they have four different projects. Um, that being said, I told you I was gonna call these guys out by name. So uh, 
Michael Crenshaw right here. You're going to hear from him in a minute. Um, JM, can you wave? Playing coy back there. Uh, and Mike Lieberman. Mike, are you in the room? Oh, he's giving a talk somewhere else. Uh, so all these guys were super, super, super helpful in creating these metrics. And we came up with five different uh, goals that could be pursued for, for projects. Uh, so the first one, we called it the cleaner. The second one, we called the uh, mechanizer. The third one, we called it the defender. Fourth one, we called it the inspector. And the fifth one, we called it the chronicler. And we felt that these five goals, these five metrics, would significantly elevate, when I say we feel, based on our research and the conversations and the arguments that we had, um, this would be a way that, if pro that projects could significantly elevate their security. And so just a huge thanks to these guys for taking time and putting a lot of thought into forming these metrics that projects could use, because we're definitely going to be using these same standards next year, just maybe not in the same way. So thank you, gentlemen. Um, for education, uh, Aaron Linskins, my colleague, is a technical writer at Sonatype, helped out with some of the education materials, uh, but also Colin Griffin is in the room uh, because he helped author the course, uh, which name I forgot. Um, you can see all three of these courses on the LF training portal. Um, they're free, they take about an hour to work through, and they are really useful for helping understand how to secure your own project security. So Colin, please wave while everybody awkwardly claps and says, thank you for making educational resources. <laughs> now, we have insight from Argo. That's the part where I forgot. Um, are there URLs for those resources? An intelligent person would have provided those for you. Um, no, let's let's get together after that. If if uh, if there's anything I've referenced that you guys want to s to see more of, uh, get with me and I'll make sure that we we get you guys that information. You can also find it on their um, the Google for like Linux Foundation training and certification program. You can type in their free courses, that kind of stuff. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so Argo, you know what? I'm not even going to segue to you. Please just take the mic. Hey everyone, uh, so I'm Michael. Again, I do Argo things. Uh, they're kind of four and a half Argo projects, um, workflows, events, CD rollouts, and Helm, which JM, uh, who you saw earlier, uh, helps maintain. So I'm on the CD part. I get one little slice of that pie. Um, and I've been working on Security Slam stuff with Eddie for a couple of years now. Uh, and I really love the Security Slam because as a maintainer, it gives me a moment to sort of take a breath and uh, just refocus on some of the things that the industry is um, promoting as ways to make your project more secure uh, and maybe I haven't caught up on. So it's, it's a really helpful, um, helpful event for myself and my team. Uh, I do wanna know, before I go into sort of Argo's experience with Security Slam, how many folks here maintain an open source project? Any, not even just CNCF. So a few, and how many folks contribute uh, to open source projects in any way, docs, whatever. Okay, so I'm, I'm very maintainer brained. So what I'm about to tell you about Argo's experience with Security Slam is from the perspective of someone who is trying to help my project serve our customers, our users better, um, and in improving our software. But I also want you all to kind of picture yourself and how you can fit into that process, because Anybody can help a project uh, really uh, make the Security Slam a real success for, uh, for them each year. So what we learned with Argo is you kind of need three key ingredients in order for Security Slam or, or any effort like this to improve your security to go well. The first thing is you probably need some kind of champion whose job it is to like make this their deal for a few weeks, maybe a couple months. And as a maintainer, something I've noticed about open source contributors is there's sort of an ebb and flow to how much time people have. Uh, Argo has been very lucky over the t past two security slams to have some folks who, like right as it started, were starting to have some more free time, had some energy for open source, and really took on that champion role. So for the last slam, it was Justin Marquis. Uh, he was working independently as a contributor to Argo, and he was interested in making 
Argo run better on his ARM home lab. Uh, so he was already in our CD CI pipelines, and he was interested in Salsa 3 compliant builds. He dove in and rewrote our entire build pipeline over the course of like two weeks. A bunch of stuff that I didn't understand about provenance genera generation, uh, signing images, et cetera, and he built an extremely high level security build pipeline for us. And the only thing that I had to do was be the second role, someone who could look at the PR, do a sanity check, and get it merged for them. Just get out of the contributor's way and let them do cool stuff. Uh, so that's the second thing you need, someone who can merge PRs. Um, the second time around, so this security slam, someone who just happened to have some time was Anton Gilger, and he popped in and was writing uh, security insights documents for our different Argo repos. Um, and you know, it's, it's important to identify those people and help get out of their way and get things merged. JM was the person who was the PR merger for our Argo Helm improvements. Um, that, you know, we're like, hey, we got a PR. It's going to improve our CLO monitor score. Can we please get a review, get it in? And JM just very quickly got it done. That keeps people energized. It keeps up momentum. Um, and it just helps get things done. And finally, uh, maybe the most important part of any Security Slam effort is celebrate your wins. Doesn't matter how small they are. After we got our build pipeline for Argo CD rewritten uh, and Salsa Level 3 compliant, we bragged about it a little bit. We had some social media posts. Um, and speaking of Salsa 3 compliant stuff, there's the person who wrote it all for us, Justin Marquis. We bragged about it. And we said, uh, open source community, this was a lot of effort. This is really cool. Just know that Argo did this. And lo and behold, the CNCF comes along and asks ChainGuard to audit our new build process and confirm that it was Salsa Level 3 compliant. Uh, and then there's a big CNCF blog post about that. Um, so brag about your wins. Uh, make sure that other people know what you're doing. And that just helps build energy and, uh, and get sort of the, the security hygiene stuff done. Um, as a maintainer, I can't thank like Sonatype, Google, Eddie, Katie, all these folks who make this event happen enough. Uh, it's, you know, open source, it's, it's sometimes difficult to get the resources you need. This provides me a point to say, you know, Intuit managers, people in the open source community, this is something we can rally behind and really make a difference for the users of the different Argo products in terms of how secure our software is. Um, so really appreciate them. Thank you, Eddie, and thank you all for letting me kind of describe how the security slam has gone for Argo. All right, so we are on the next point, and I told Michael not to run off because it's awards time. I'm excited about this. Jacob's excited about this. Oh, I put Jaeger as the first award slide, but... Uh, okay, you know what? If an if a Argo award uh, comes up in a second, then I'll grab it. I was supposed to have... Oh! Oh, okay. Here we go. This is extremely helpful. So, we made an award for Argo to recognize their contributions not just to their own project, but to the entire ecosystem. Uh, so, I can't scream loudly enough about this because the Argo project has paved the way for countless other projects to make their own improvements to their projects. Justin Marquis's code is copied into a bunch of CNCF projects. So just really, really want to thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Okay. Now the next one is Jaeger. I don't know if we have anybody from Jaeger here. What they asked me to do was present the award to a gopher plushie, and I didn't find a gopher plushie. Does anybody happen to have a gopher anything? The go gopher, you guys know what I'm talking about. None of us have it. Yeah, I don't have it. Uh, so I'm just going to like take a picture like this. <laughs> there we go. Award has been presented to Jaeger. Uh, so the Jaeger, uh, they managed to get the mechanizer and the cleaner badges. Um, so the mechanizer is the award for um, automating provenance and SBOM generation at build time, which is the necessary time 
for every release. That's huge. The cleaner is an indirect security hygiene set of improvements, uh, which we are also recognizing. And so the prizes for them are going to be some swag, some patches. We're just going to figure out how to get it to them. Um, uh, next up is Artifact Hub. Did Sergio or Cynthia make it up here? No, because they have their own duties being with CNCF. Artifact Hub also made some really cool improvements. Uh, so the Defender badge is the new one that's showing up there, is for getting a 100% CLO monitor score on, uh, 100% CLO, uh, on the security checks. So that's super cool. Let's just, just boom. Got a picture of it. All right. And KGB, these guys are all European, but uh, they said we're going to present it to a community member after. Oh, yes! Please come! <laughs> all right. Uh, so Marina's helping take pictures, if you don't mind coming all the way. Got to climb. Yeah. All right. This is Bradley from Upbound. So, oh, wait. Let's, how do we shake hands while doing this? Is it a left handed, right? Oh, right handed handshake. Holding this. Here we go. We got this. Somehow, We're managing. Somehow it there we go. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, man. And um, by the way, for those of you guys who completed badges, uh, Katie is going to help get patches, swag, stuff like that afterward. So don't run off without that. Um, Capsule. Capsule said that they're going to be here late today. So once more, we're going to take a picture right now, and then uh, I'll take a picture with them later on when we see them. Capsule. Uh, capsule blew me away. So, so you notice we've, we've gotten more and more badges here. Uh, so the cleaner badge that I told you about, the mechanizer badge, the defender badge, this one up here is the inspector badge. So Capsule was the first project participating in the Security Slam that did a full, not stub, not incomplete, not partial, full security self-assessment. And so that was really, really, really huge because self-assessing the security of each project on a complex level is one of the things that reveals all of the other downstream improvements that are possible that are unique to a particular project. So this is really, really, really huge that that one was completed. And you know who else did it? OpenFGA. OpenFGA was a dark horse. Andres, come on up. <laughs> OpenFGA was a dark horse. So it turns out, <laughs> yeah, 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 everybody come up, come up, come up, come up. Come up. Turns out that uh, OpenFGA saw all the Security Slam stuff happening, not by watching the Security Slam channels, but by watching Clo Monitor and seeing all these different changes that have been happening. Uh, and we just reached out and said, hey, do you guys want some credit and prizes for all these changes? Uh, and so you guys went, went above and beyond. You guys added extra stuff after that. Yep. What, was, what was the extra stuff that you guys did? We did the provenance thing. That's and also three compliance. Yep. Right. Those two things. Provenance stuff. And, and we merged the security. Uh, self-assessment that was mostly done, but not merged. So. And we used Argo's, some of Argo's artifacts. We used some of Argo's artifacts as inspiration for that. So again, just thank you, Argo, and the people that were involved in that, that kind of paved the way. That was, that made it really easy for us, so. Cool. Thanks, OpenFGA. All right. Yeah, you, let me get out of the way. You guys take a picture, like, please do it. Do you guys want to stand in front of your slide up there while we got it up? You could do that too. Yeah, it's a big, it's, that, that logo is a lot bigger. But that brings us to a close for the uh, presentations for today. Um, the last few minutes that we have slotted off, um, go back one. Oh my goodness. Stand in front of the slide, he says. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. So Katie's going to help you guys get information for awards. Um, so every single one of those badges is a gift card from the Ghost team, uh, $200 gift card each. So you guys can choose what to do with that for your guys' project. Uh, maintainers, contributors, whatever it is to do what's best for your community. And we also have a bunch of swag. We made a ton of socks. So uh, this is kind of a pre-celebration for next year. So I encourage you guys to uh, pop over to the site over here uh, in these last couple minutes that we have to get some socks. If you're a maintainer that completed badges, get your patch. Uh, so you can, we've got iron on patches for you guys to put on a hoodie, a t-shirt, a backpack, whatever the case is. But everybody, 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 grab some socks to remind you we're doing this again. Thanks guys, appreciate you coming out.